what's going on YouTube I'm back at it again here uh, gonna be replacing the compressor on this train unit here uh, one of our guys wrote it up and also it's a heat pump we're gonna be replacing the reversing valve as well too just got the new compressor up on the roof here uh, got all my equipment up here for right now just kind of start and uh, I'm gonna get set up here real quick and then uh, uh, turn this unit off it's running right now probably on that circuit 2 or circuit 1 whichever compressor I'm not sure which one we're doing yet so uh, anyways I'm gonna turn it off and then I'll get back to you guys here in just a second all right guys so this is our compressor here i guess somebody disconnected oh well one of our guys disconnected it already and we're going to be replacing this reversing valve back here um uh, yeah i think this compressor grounded i'm not going to go ahead and check it but uh from my understanding it grounded so uh anyhow get this thing off uh figure out which liquid line dryer is what to our circuit here and uh just get it going man so uh i'm uh let me set up real quick here and uh show you guys how i set up my equipment on this and uh we'll go from there all right all right guys so we got we're recovering right now uh i need to go get my scale that was an empty tank but uh way that chart oh wait that refrigerant but i got my we're at 23 psi i just looked it up on my phone here uh so i got my field piece uh job link probe on there but anyhow, uh, I really like this setup here. I'm using the Apion 3.8 hoses. Uh, let me go ahead and pull it up on my phone here so we can monitor the pressure. Here, but uh, one second here. Yeah, so we're at 16 psi right now, so we're doing pretty good. I'm using the Apion 3.8 hoses with my Y feed wire and then I'm going straight through and bringing it into the tank here uh, anyhow we're covering the charge this is R22 so this tank not even warm really so uh, anyhow uh, gotta get that reversing valve out you have to get the compressor out dryer out so in the meantime while this is well I'm, not even, I'm gonna just let it do its thing I said sometimes if it's taking a little longer to recover i'll go ahead and replace the contactor and do what i can you know as far as that goes uh but in this case we're just gonna do it like that one thing i want to mention to you guys is every time you guys are doing a compressor change out make sure the tonnage might not always be the same uh so for example this is a a uh, 56 this is a 54 but that's what train gave me um, and it's not always going to be the same because they don't have that compressor or what whatnot so I'm not too worried about that you just lose 2,000 BTUs capacity however uh, main thing you want to look for is voltage so this is 208 230 three phase want to make sure that's correct uh, before y'all even go start changing stuff out uh, so anyhow got it all set up over here and uh, see where we're at now we're at 13, so we're at 8, yep, 8, so, yep, I'm gonna let this go ahead and uh, start doing this, uh, finish doing this thing here, and uh, I'll see some video here in a little bit after this is finished. Alright guys, so I just wanted to show you guys an easy way to unbolt these compressors, because sometimes they can be a pain to get back there, but I'll just go ahead and put my extensions on my drill, and then we'll just go ahead and undo that. If it's too long, you know, I kind of adjust the extensions as needed, but uh, let's get on that bolt. Pull that off and do the same for the back there. All right, guys, so uh, I kind of let it run a little longer. Sorry, man, I don't have my GoPro with me today. It's kind of dead, so, uh, or it is dead, so. I mean, uh, so I let it run a little longer than I wanted to uh but anyways we're at negative 15.7 so it's kind of good because then i can actually see if it even holds a vacuum but uh looks like it's doing okay so anyhow um got everything turned off got the valves closed so we'll go ahead and take the hoses off here So, yeah, 
it's in a vacuum so anyhow i'm gonna have to take it apart anyways i hate going into a vacuum because you left some moisture in there but no matter i'm gonna uh put a good vacuum on it anyways but uh let's go ahead and get started i'm gonna start getting this thing out here and uh get it all on out and uh, i'll keep you guys posted all right guys so we're gonna go ahead and start taking this uh compressor out I went ahead and just moved my wires back, put them up over that pressure switch there, just to kind of make, make it a little easier for me. for a little bit so that way it doesn't stick back on that fit in there let it kind of dry out start coming gray on you all right oh god this part here Seeing how that reversing valve is facing with the three pipes coming on the top down, what I could do is I could cut this off 
and uh you're gonna get some shavings in there and they might go to that pipe that uh this line right here the uh discharge line but uh we could blow all that shavings out um or you could go ahead and just on sweat it here on sweat it here on sweat it here pull it out but without this compressor in the way it's not gonna be hard to sweat these pipes on here so i might just go ahead and uh cut them off and then we can on sweat each of these pieces it'll be a lot easier i think there's different ways you can do it so you kind of just got to look at your whole overall uh setup you know and see what's the easiest way but let's get this compressor out of here we'll get that reversing valve out of here um and then uh i could do that dryer that's way back over there It'd be a lot easier doing it that way here so let me get back with you guys here in just a minute all right y'all so i got that um valve out i kind of did it a different way i was gonna go ahead and uh cut it but so it's easier just doing it this way here so i got it out just like that there so what i'm gonna do is i'm not worried about that fitting i'm more worried about this one i'm gonna score that fit in there or scratch it so i know exactly which way that pipe is angled at i could put it on my new valve that way as well too uh so that's gonna make it a lot easier for me and uh and other than that it's just playing with that suction line or whatnot uh i mean i'd rather do the brazen on this valve out here um then in there it'll be a lot easier and i keep a lot more heat off of that valve so that's why it's it's better doing it this way and just pulling it all out setting it up over here then you can do the brazen up top whatever you got to do so we're going to go ahead and do that real quick here and uh give me a minute i need to go get some more acetylene because i ran out but uh refill my acetylene bring some uh wet rags up here and uh keep on going all right guys so i got that dryer out and replaced it's not the prettiest thing but man it was tough to get back there with that txv being so close and then i have my rag on it and uh wet rag on it and uh i mean you know, they only give you that little bit there so uh hoping i didn't put too much heat on there but uh i mean i didn't put too much heat on it but hopefully you know that rag was wrapped around good enough i still had kind of like a little gap on the bottom here but uh the valve's a little warm but it, i mean but it was pretty hot whenever i took it off so the front was easy just getting in the back side there was a little tough so i kind of had to put a little bit more heat than what i would like to being that close to that valve but anyhow we'll, we'll find out i guess so uh the uh, bottom came out easy uh, and that one wasn't too bad there but uh anyhow uh, it's not the prettiest thing but it works all right guys so i got that valve in place now so uh that backside one over there on this far end one over here was a little tough to get to it's still pretty hot so uh anyhow um uh, i have my rags on that valve there see all that water i have uh dipping my rags but anyhow uh it's in place so we're gonna get that compressor in here clean this up a little bit get that compressor in here and uh we should be ready to roll all right guys so uh i got it pressurized with nitrogen got that compressor in um uh, both of them in on there uh reversing valve dryers all replaced ready to roll uh see how much nitrogen i got in here so i got 215 psi sitting in there now so we're just gonna close this off uh, let's go ahead and disconnect this by the way uh, i was gonna say this is a real I, I really enjoy using this one uh this is a real nice uh uh flow meter or flow regulator for your uh nitrogen purging whenever you're purging nitrogen through when you're brazing but uh i really like it's got that little adjustment screw you just get that ball halfway you know and uh it's real nice so anyhow um i'll probably do a review on that but uh if you guys want to see that but uh so anyways we're sitting at uh 214.9 i just put nitrogen in there so uh it's gonna kind of settle out but let's go ahead and get my snoop wherever that thing is at oh here we go let's go ahead and hit these joints up i know i don't have no leaks here or there i, mean, I know i don't have no leaks so not really worried about those but we'll go ahead and hit it all up anyways Everywhere where I made a join at, we'll just hit it up. 
doesn't hurt to check especially before you start pulling a vacuum and doing all that and putting refrigerant in there so uh, that one was a little tough to get to I'm sure it's alright but my mirror at I can't see any of this I'm good on these I'm not worried about those that one was a little hard to get to back there you kind of see how I, it looks a little ugly but it's not leaking so I'll take it I try to heat it up to smooth it out a little bit and uh, having a hard time doing that there but Anyhow, uh, without it wanting to pull out on me, so uh, looking good there. Looking pretty good there. All right, we're good. Yeah, let's see where we're holding at. I dropped down a point or so, but let's see here. Ah, uh, we're still, yeah, point, point 0.1, so nah, that's not bad, that's good. Alright, so I'm going to let this go ahead and uh, let this nitrogen go out, and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, uh, hook up the vacuum pump to it, start pulling the vacuum on it. By the way, um, I really like these T fittings too, for these, uh, I'll show you guys these Atheon T's quarter inch speeds I got the 516 as well but oh man they are nice they're nice to be able to put refrigerant in so pretty much all I carry in my tool bag I got two of these which I really don't need two just need one but uh, I got two of those I got my smart probe and then I keep this hose in there all the time and if I need to add any refrigerant or anything like that top of unit off I'll go ahead and just hook up the hose and my smart probe to it, so that makes it real nice too. I'll probably end up doing a review on that if that's something you guys want to see. If you guys do want to see any type of tool reviews, let me know. I'll be more than happy to uh, uh, make some on the tools I got at least. But uh, let's go ahead and get this all wired back up. They have wire ties everywhere kind of hanging and all that stuff, so we're going to try to fix that up, make it look nice and neat. And uh, I'll get back with you guys here in just a little bit. Alright guys, let's go ahead and hook this up. Just trying to do it one hand here but uh kind of got a mess going on over here gonna have to clean up but uh anyways we're all hooked up we're at 760,000. so let's go ahead and turn to open up the ballast on here we're gonna turn the pump on let that kind of start up and then we'll go ahead and you guys should start seeing that thing climbing down pretty quick let's see if it starts pulling down from there just from that one valve. Oh, turn that, turn that on. There you go. It's starting to pull down. Oh, look at all that exhaust coming out of there. So we're at 400. So about 15,000. I'll go ahead and close the ballast off. Uh, so the, the whole point of the ballast, in case you don't know, it really helps with. I don't know if this is the whole point, but I know it helps with uh, not contaminating your oil so quickly so if you open that up all that exhaust that you just saw kind of come out of here all that moisture and all that good stuff that just came out of the system here uh won't go straight to the oil so quickly so you can kind of uh it won't contaminate it so fast so uh i'm not sure exactly what happens in the pump when that happens but uh, I usually just leave it open till I get to about 15, 20,000 and then I'll go ahead and blank it off or close the ballast off. If you got like a JB pump or something like that, you know, you just have that little round screw deal, just open that up and do whatever. And um, all pumps that I've seen. So we're at 15 right now, sitting at 15. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that ballast off and uh, let's just start coming down pretty quickly here. Give that a minute. I'm gonna go 14 and it's bringing it down so i'm gonna go ahead and start cleaning up because i got a big mess over here i'm gonna go bring my scale i'm gonna go bring my refrigerant uh i'm gonna put new refrigerant on here so uh i'm gonna go get all that and then uh come back i mean um i mean go ahead and uh put gas in there and run it and do its thing i guess and uh it's about 10 
10 14 so i started at eight so uh we're making pretty good on time i gotta clean up the wires too oh and i gotta replace that contactor up there for that circuit one so i still got a little bit of work to do uh hopefully i'll be ready i'll do all that before lunchtime and then uh go take lunch leave the vacuum pump running i guess and then uh, i mean we're already at 39 38 but we'll leave the vacuum pump running and then uh go from there i'll get with you guys all right guys so i got that uh contactor in um i got we're at 610 right now it was at five something and i had closed down the valves a little bit and uh one thing i forgot to do though what you want to do is always rock these valves uh just to kind of get any air that might build up inside of it uh refrigerant air whatever um so we're gonna rock those a few times and you can see it's gonna move quite a bit because i haven't rocked this one yet so um just gonna rock them until it kind of quits moving so much there we go all right so we're at 580 uh so i'm gonna let this finish doing this thing here i'm gonna go take lunch kind of put everything i needed over there down there uh, i'm actually might go ahead and just drop that and put that stuff in my truck now um and then plug that plug back in i got it all wired up here i even had to pull some wire off because uh man they just had wire nuts everywhere i mean here i had no choice because the pressure switch wires were too short but the other ones i just ran them straight uh but anyways i'm gonna clean all this up probably after i get refrigerant in so i kind of get my hoses out of the way and everything else but anyhow we uh still got some work to do here so yeah i'm gonna take that stuff down put it in my truck and uh leave the rest up here i guess and then uh go get lunch i'll come back to it and we'll see where we're at all right guys so got back from lunch we're at sitting at 258 so we're gonna go ahead and blank this off and blank that off might rise up a little bit because of that ball valve there but uh we'll let that sit for a little bit and then uh i'm gonna get hooked up here with the uh uh with the uh refrigerant and then uh we'll come back out here and check on it here so what time is it uh 1206 so we'll give it a little bit and then uh We'll get back. All right, y'all. So uh, uh, about to be 12:16. So it's about to be uh, 10 minutes here. Yeah, it's 10 minutes. We're at 4 4:02. So we're still under 500 after 10 minutes. I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, like I said, as this is an old system, R22. I mean, it's an old unit. So uh, I'm not expecting it to be 100% tight, but. You know we're good um go ahead and start putting some refrigerant in this thing and uh get it going here and then uh i need to get my gas in there hold 7.9 pounds uh put that in there and then uh i already purged my line i already got my uh tank weighed in so we're gonna go ahead and open this line up i already got it purged all the way to this valve here i'm actually closed this valve off and then we're going to go ahead and uh, I don't want to get any refrigerant in my gauge there, but kind of go ahead and just dump it in a little slowly because I wish they put liquid line ports on here, but there's no liquid line port. So uh, anyhow, we'll go ahead and uh, let that deal there do its thing. So we don't hit this compressor up too well. I guess it don't really matter anyways, but... Uh, Go ahead and just dump it in. So yeah, so I'm gonna get I'm gonna go ahead and get the 7.9 pounds. Uh which will be about seven pounds, fifteen ounces or so. And then uh we'll go from there. I'll get back to you guys here. Alright guys, so uh we're charged up now. Uh I got seven pounds, fifteen point seven five, just to kind of take in what's in my hose here a little bit and uh it's gonna be alright. So uh uh, try to do the best I can with these wires here uh, went ahead and just wire tied them all up and uh, got them on that pipe there nice and tight uh, on that foam or that uh, uh, cork tape and uh, taped up those wires back there try to keep everything off of the pipe you know so uh, I want to keep everything off of the pipes so nothing rubs up against the pipes over time creates a uh, short and then 
blow a hole in your pipe or something like that so uh we're all really rocking and rolling man so i'm about to turn this thing on here let me go ahead and get my uh jobling probes stick them on here i need to put this schrader back on i already put this one on so uh put this one back on here and uh start it up see how she does all right man all right so we're sitting at about 70 psi compressors just came on both of them i gave it a minute that first one came on and that second one came on there so uh uh this is why you always want to take pictures of your wiring though uh, i had the phases reversed so when that first one came on i heard it turned it off real quick and reversed the phases but uh i took a picture of it but i thought i had it right so i didn't look at my picture just to double check but yeah you can see it's got red on the back side of that terminal and then you got black but those are supposed to be black all right guys so uh both compressors are running now uh this circuit came on first and uh started making a weird noise so i was like what the heck's going on uh well the phases was reversed uh so i turned it off real quick and uh that's problem with three phase but you know I, I had red blue and black i took a picture of this before i disconnected it here and uh let me see if i can find that picture but this is why you take pictures but you actually use your pictures because i didn't use it see as you guys could tell that was before i pulled that old contactor off i took a picture of it but i figured i know better than my picture because i knew blue was in the middle on the back side of that terminal so i figured the blue would go in the middle but anyways it is what it is uh just like they have it here red blue and black but here they have red black and blue but anyhow got that figured out uh turned it on both circuits are running now so let's look at our what we're doing on this new uh compressor circuit so we're running 71 252 r22 running it just came on so uh and it's probably a little warm in the space there but let's see if you guys can see that or not but it's about 70 I'm trying to get it to focus here but but anyways it's about 77.8 uh supply 61.0 which gives us about a 17 degree split uh which is not bad for an older unit i don't know how the ductwork set up or anything Plus, I think this is open plenum return, so I'm sucking just the return from the plenum, so uh, it's a little warmer in the plenum than it actually is in the space there. Uh, our sub coolant's at 21 degrees. It's a little high, but got to let it run, see if it brings that return air down a little bit, uh, see where we're at. Um, hmm. We're at 32 degrees superheat. I don't know why that is a, a different color there, but hmm. yeah, no, my probes are in the correct spot. Okay, well, we're just gonna let it run for a little while, see what it does, and then uh, I'll get back with you guys here shortly. But uh, I got my return air probe right there. I tried putting it back here at first, but it uh, didn't work very well because there's that another panel behind here for the economizer. Uh, and then I got my supply right here. So uh, let me just clean up a little bit. And I'm going to clean up a little bit and then uh, we'll get back to it and take a look and see what, what we got going on over here. So, all right, get with you guys in here in a second. All right, guys, so I tried to get some video uh, right on my last readings, but the unit has satisfied right before i was about to film so anyhow i went ahead and just pulled my probes off um yeah it was running it was running good uh when i put the i actually went ahead and just threw the cover on there with my probes on there completely because it was kind of still sticking out and uh i was running about a 17 degree sub coolant a uh, 26 degree superheat and i had a uh, 18 no uh 19.1 uh like it's probably about to come on again right now uh just that's the blower contactor there but i need to let them know probably need to replace it but you can probably hear it there but yeah i need to replace that too so i'm gonna let them know about that 
see if they want me to go ahead and knock that out. I do have one in my truck, but uh, anyhow, um, or I might have to come back and do it. But anyways, uh, the uh, I had a 19.1 uh, degree uh, split, so uh, delta T. So that's pretty good. So yeah, compressor just came on. This one here came on. They're both doing the exact same thing. They're both pulling 13.4 amps, even though this one's a hair bit smaller. So uh, doing the exact same thing as this one here is doing. So uh, nice, cool suction line there. So yeah, she's running. The other one, so it's 3,000 BTU smaller, but that's what train gives you. So that's what train gives you. I, I noticed it right when I looked at it. I said, "Hold on, you know this one. You could tell. I mean, it's, it's a little bit. It's not about. They weigh about the same, but I mean, you can see this one's a little wider and taller. Yeah, wider and taller. That one's just what. That's what it is. That's what they get. That's what they have. It works. It cools. Does what it's supposed to do." Uh, the unit's actually satisfying, so that's a good thing as well, too. Uh, so, yeah, we're all set. All right, on to the next one. I'll try to film some video of that next one as well, too, and get you guys on the loop on that. I'll see you on the next one.